Achilles applied a poultice of yarrow to the wounds of his fellow soldiers. Daphne was rooted into a bay laurel tree for protection against the god Apollo. Odysseus held a mullen stalk to defend himself against Circe's mystical powers. These ancient Greek myths blended passion, pain, victory, and defeat with a touch of ancient sorcery. As master storytellers, the ancient Greeks created fantastical stories that have riveted audiences for thousands of years. Today, we'll explore some of these myths and the plants that worked alongside the divine gods and goddesses of the ancient world. Let us first visit the battlefield, a common scene in antiquity where iron weapons incessantly clashed against the flesh of muscled toned soldiers. Every ancient Greek leader pursued the chance of victory in order to lay claim to territories and natural resources, including provisions, healing plants, and open seas. Achilles was a celebrated warrior and hero of the Trojan War, as described in Homer's Iliad and played by Brad Pitt in the 2000 movie Troy. Achilles was the son of a king and a sea nymph and was taught the healing arts by Chiron the centaur, who was half man, half horse. In one of his most notable scenes, as painted on a vase from the 5th century BCE, Achilles is depicted tending the wound of Patrocles, his friend and fellow warrior who suffers from a battle wound on his arm. What we can imagine is perhaps similar to Madeline Miller's description of wound dressing in her book Circe, where she writes, I poured honey onto the yarrow, added beeswax to bind the salve. The air was musky sweet and sharp with herbs. In ancient Greece, yarrow was used to stop bleeding and heal wounds very often during battles when metal weapons pierced through skin and bone. Other names of the plant include soldier's wound wart or warrior plant for this very reason. We know yarrow was a favorite of Achilles because the Latin botanical name Achillea is named in his honor. While there are a variety of yarrow species growing worldwide, Achillea agaritifolia, commonly known as Greek yarrow, is native to northern Greece and the Balkan region. Another species, both rare and protected, is Olympus yarrow, Achillea ambrosiaca, which grows only on Mount Olympus, where the ancient Greek god Zeus reigned from. Herbalists today use yarrow to heal internal and external wounds, lower fevers, and decrease inflammation in the liver and kidneys, among many other uses. Okay, so now we travel further back in time when the ancient gods and goddesses either frolicked on their sacred mountain, joyously coupling up, or seeking revenge against transgressions. Apollo, son of Zeus and god of music, was seeking his own enjoyment when he spotted the beautiful nymph Daphne, daughter of a river god. Adamant about his passion, as legend has it he had been pierced by one of Eros's love arrows, he persisted to stalk Daphne until she cried out to the gods asking for protection against him. Upon hearing her request, her father, the river god, transformed her into a laurel tree, Loris Nobilis, which in Greek bears her name Daphne. Some accounts describe how the laurel tree became sacred to Apollo, who declared the tree would have eternal youth, never having its leaves turn brown or falling off. And the laurel wreath, placed upon the head, would become a crown of victory and protection even till, until this day. And while Apollo didn't get what he wanted, we certainly did. The leaves of the laurel tree, bay leaves, are used in both herbal remedies and home cooking for a touch of magic on the digestive system and the imagination. Finally, we travel to the mystical home of Circe, also pronounced Kirki or Kirki. A powerful goddess and sorceress in Homer's book The Odyssey, she could hide the moon to darken the skies and destroy her enemies with poisonous juices. Most notably, she transformed some of Odysseus's men into pigs using magical herbs and incantations. To save himself from the same fate, Odysseus used the plant moly, a gift from Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Some research suggests that the plant was snowdrop, Galanthus nivalis, which is native to the Mediterranean and contains galanthamine, an antidote to chemicals that induce a delusional state. 
Moly was described as having a black root with a flower as white as milk. And, for some reason, it could not be uprooted by human hand. Circe was the daughter of Helios, the sun god, and the ocean nymph Percy, and lived on the island of Aie. While the exact location still perplexes scholars, Mount Cerceo, an Italian mountain between Rome and Naples, bears her mystical name, as well as the nearby cave, Grotta della Maga Cerce. If you visit, be forewarned, as Ovid the Roman poet exclaimed, Aeneas, I warn you, keep away from Xerxes' shores. Ah, the fantastical tales of ancient Greece, from Yarrow on the battlefield to a woman turned laurel tree to holy moly. These are the stories we can share to revive the magic of our plant allies and develop a deeper connection to these timeless plants. Makes me wonder, though, what other stories may have been lost in the creases of time? Well, perhaps the plants already tell us. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in more ancient herbal adventures, you can follow me on Instagram at The Greek Herbalist or visit my website at www.thegreekherbalist.com. You can also contact me directly at maria at thegreekherbalist.com. And as the Greek sings, go, dasikala, be well. <laughs> <laughs>